Hi, as I was looking for ideas for my next tutorial, I came across this work by Daniel Stern by chance. I thought it might be interesting for you to get familiar with the process of creating such a looping animation. But before, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you're interested in learning motion design and after things fundamentally and step by step to becoming a pro motion designer, I highly recommend checking out my Motion Hero Masterclass. Okay, without further ado, let's start. I've already made the cards with the help of the shape tool and mask in the effects. If you want to learn and use this technique efficiently, check out this tutorial. I colored the labels of the cards on the right side different from the cards on the left so that we can find them better. The pink layers are for the right cards and the yellow ones are for the left cards. The first thing that I need to do is to make a perfect loop animation for the left cards. For that I have to place markers at the upper border of the scene as well as the lower border of the scene. Let me zoom in and select this card. I pick up the pen tool and draw a straight line exactly right here and I set it strong to 2. I do the same for the lower border of the scene. I don't need the right cards for the time being, so I select one of the right cards, then right click on its label and select label grow and hide them and then shy them. The next thing to do is I parent these layers to a null object. I select the left card's layers and using the motion tools, I parent them to a null object. If you were paying attention, you noticed that the speed of the right cards was relatively faster than the left ones. So I animate the left cards on 20 frames and the right cards on 10 frames. I open the position of the null and create the keyframe for it. 20 frames ahead and I move these up so the lower marker aligns exactly with the upper border of the scene. I select all the layers and using Alt and Close bracket I trim them by 20 frames. I also limit the work area here. Then I duplicate these layers and change the color of the labels. Note that we need to duplicate these cards three times so I can create a perfect loop. That was the first one. So I open their position and by changing the position move them up. Let me zoom in a bit so I can see the marker and put it exactly on the upper border of the scene. I move them slowly by holding control and dragging the position value. I duplicate them once more and change their label color. For these, I move them down and align the marker with the lower border of the scene. Then I go to the end of the animation and duplicate them once more and change their label color. And I move them down again. I take a snapshot of the first frame so I can compare it with the last frame to whether the loop was perfect or not. Let me zoom in. As you can see nothing changes and this means that our loop animation is perfectly made. Well let's check it again when it's playing. The next thing to do is loop the keyframes of the position of the knob. I click here, then in property, and then select loop out cycle. Well, for the right cards, I repeat the same process as I did for the left car, with the difference that our animation occurs over 10 frames.
The next thing that I need to do is set the timing of the final animation. To do that, I limit the work area to 100 frames. To see the frame counter, I come here, hold Ctrl and click on it. I go to frame 100 and press N, so the work area would be exactly 100 frames. Now I select all the layers and hit Alt and close brackets so the layers would continue until frame 100. Now as you can see both sides of the animation are perfectly locked. To make the cards look better I go to the layer menu and create a new adjustment layer. And then I add the yellow effect to end and apply the settings to my liking. To make them even better, I select all the layers except for the null objects and the adjustment layer, then I change their mode to soft light. Okay, after I'm done with the animation loop, it's time to make those deformations for our animation. To do that, I go to the project panel and I put this composition to a new comp. I create a solid layer as the background. Then I set the mode of the comb to screen. Now as you can see it got better. Before doing the deforming, I duplicate this comb and rename it to shadow. I set its mode to normal. And I increase its scale. Then I have to flip it horizontally. And I decrease its opacity. I think 15 is okay. Or even less, maybe 10. I limit the work area to 100 frames just like I did for the cards comp. Okay, to make the deformation, I use the warp effect. But before that, I hide the shadow layer so I can work on this comp easily. I add the warp effect to it. I change the warp style to bulge. And I change the warp accents to vertical. And I decrease the bend slightly. I think 25 is good. I create a keyframe for bend and hit U. I go non frames forward. And I copy and paste this keyframe here so it wouldn't deform between these two keyframes. Again, I go 8 frames forward. And I make it a slip. I think minus 25 should do. I go forward by 21 frames and I copy and paste this keyframe. 32 frames ahead and I increase the width a little bit. Then after 16 frames I copy and paste the previous keyframe. And lastly I go to frame 100 and duplicate the initial keyframe here. Now I have to create a funnel like shape for it. To do that I create a keyframe for the vertical distortion. Then I hit U so I can see all the keyframes. Now I can take the help of the bend keyframes and create the keyframes for the vertical distortion exactly where they are. I change the vertical distortion a little bit here. I think minus 5 is good. Then in the next bend keyframe, I copy and paste this keyframe. In the next keyframe, I set the vertical distortion to 0. So it goes back to its original state. In the next keyframe, I copy and paste this keyframe. Then in the next keyframe of the bend, I create that funnel-like deformation. I think this much is enough. Now I go to the next keyframe of the bend and duplicate this keyframe here. So in this interval, it stays the same. And for the last frame, I copy and paste the initial keyframe. Let's check it out. It's amazing. I select all the keyframes and make them easy. In order to create the same deformations for the shadow layer, I make it visible. I select the warp effect, go to the edit menu, click on the copy with property links, then I select the shadow layer and hit Ctrl V. Now let's see how it looks. It's perfect. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.